everyone, and welcome back to our family devotional in the book of Genesis. Can anyone remember what we have learned so far? Let me think. It's a lot. But we have learned about God creating the world, about Adam and Eve and how sin entered the world, Noah and the flood and the ark, Abraham and the promise or covenant God made to him, Isaac, Rebecca, Jacob, Esau, and now Jacob's son, Joseph. Whew, you guys, that's a lot. Before we read from our Bible, though, um, we should stop and we should open in prayer. Okay, let's do that. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this time we can spend together. We pray that you would send your Holy Spirit to be with us now as we read through your word. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. And do you know what we need before we get to our story? to read our story. That's right, we need our Bibles. And you can also grab your piece of paper and something to write with if you need to. You can pause the video while you get those things, okay? So, on our piece of paper, we are going to want to write the words Joseph, Pharaoh, who was the king, and cupbearer, okay? That's someone who serves the, the drinks to Pharaoh. So. If you want to, if you don't want to write the words out, you can draw little pictures for each of those, okay? Joseph, Pharaoh, and Cupbearer. And I want you to listen really well as I'm reading and see if you can write a little check mark for each time you hear those words mentioned, okay? And then we'll see if we heard them the same number of times, all right? So we're gonna be in Genesis, which is the first book in the Bible. And remember, we look for the big number and then the little, okay? And we're gonna be in Joseph, or in Joseph, we're learning about Joseph. We're going to be in Genesis chapter 39 through 41, which is a lot, but I'm not going to read directly from here, but I want you to have that open just so you can see what I'm reading about here for yourselves, okay? But it's so long, I won't read every single word, okay? You ready? Let's begin. Genesis 39 to 41. The travelers who brought Joseph took him to Egypt and sold him to an Egyptian officer named Potiphar. God was with Joseph and made him successful at everything he did. Potiphar put Joseph in charge as his personal assistant. One day, Potiphar's wife tried to get Joseph to sin against God and Potiphar, but Joseph refused. This made her angry, and she accused Joseph of doing something he didn't do. Potiphar believed his wife, and Joseph went to jail. But God was still with Joseph and blessed him. The jail warden put Joseph in charge of the other prisoners. One night, two of the prisoners, Pharaoh's cupbearer and baker, both had dreams. They told Joseph about the dreams they had. The cupbearer dreamed about a vine with three branches. Grapes grew on the vine and the cupbearer squeezed them into a cup and gave it to Pharaoh. The baker dreamed they had three baskets of bread on his head. The top basket had baked goods for Pharaoh, but the birds were eating them out of the basket. Joseph told them what the dreams meant. Joseph said that in three days, the cupbearer would serve Pharaoh again, but the baker would not because in three days he would be put to death. Joseph asked the cupbearer to remember him and to tell Pharaoh that he did not deserve to be in jail. The cupbearer did serve Pharaoh again, but he forgot about Joseph. Two years later, Pharaoh had two dreams. Pharaoh saw seven fat cows eaten by seven skinny cows and seven fat heads of grain eaten by seven thin heads of grain. No one knew what these dreams meant. Finally, the cupbearer remembered Joseph. God told Joseph what Pharaoh's dreams meant, and Joseph explained the dreams to Pharaoh. The dreams represent seven years when food, plenty of food will grow 
followed by seven years when no food will grow. You should choose someone to save food during the good years to use during the bad years. Pharaoh realized that God was with Joseph, so he made Joseph second in command in all of Egypt. No one was more powerful than Joseph except for Pharaoh himself. Joseph stored away food during the good years. When the famine came, people from every land came to Egypt to buy grain from Joseph. All right, you guys, wow. How many times did you count Joseph, Pharaoh, and Cup? I counted Joseph 22 times, Pharaoh 12 times, and Cupbearer 7 times. Did you have the same amount? Yeah? All right. So if you remember the start of the story last week, you may realize that Joseph has some experience with meaningful dreams. In his dreams as a boy, Joseph saw images that suggested he would one day rule over his family. As a slave, it may have seemed that would never happen but God was with Joseph and blessed Joseph's work. When Potiphar's wife lied about Joseph, he ended up in prison, but not even jail time can stop God's plans. Soon Joseph was so trusted that the jailer allowed Joseph to run the prison. When the cupbearer and baker from Pharaoh's own kitchens were thrown in jail, Joseph was there in a position of power. After they had strange dreams that Joseph could understand, it seemed that Joseph may have found a way out of prison at last. But for two years after the cupbearer went back to serving Pharaoh, he forgot about Joseph. Whew. It wasn't until Pharaoh himself had a dream that needed explaining that the cupbearer finally remembered Joseph. So Joseph exclaimed, explained Pharaoh's dreams about years of plenty and years of famine. So Pharaoh trusted Joseph to collect food for Egypt. God gave Joseph power to understand dreams, and through that ability, Joseph moved into a new position of power, this time over all of Egypt. This position would be extremely important for the next part of God's plan to save Jacob's family. When we are in the middle of hard times or sad situations, it can be really difficult to trust God. Though we may not always see the ways that God is working, we can trust that he is working. We can trust that just like Joseph may not have known at first why God allowed him to be a slave and then a prisoner, that it was all part of God's plan. God sent Joseph to Egypt and blessed him so that he rose to a position of great authority and God used Joseph to help Joseph's family and many others. Now, when Jesus comes to earth, when Jesus came to earth, he gave up his position of honor in heaven to be the savior of the world. Then Jesus died on the cross and rose again to save us from sin. God's plan always works out for his glory and our good. So let's take a few minutes now to talk through some questions as a family, and you can feel free to pause the video and join me again when you're ready. Do you know what time it is? That's right, it's our memory verse challenge time. This week's memory verse is Genesis 39, 21a. The Lord was with Joseph and extended kindness to him. Okay. For our challenge today, let's get some pieces of paper and write one word on each piece of paper along with the reference on one piece. So that's Genesis, the Genesis portion. And you'll want to lay the papers out in order and read through it together a few times. Then the grown-up or grown-ups in your house can hide the pieces of paper around the house while everyone else closes their eyes or goes and hides in another room. Then everyone who's keeping their eyes closed can go on the scavenger hunt for the verse papers. And you can work together to put them back in the right order. And then go ahead and read through it a couple times as a family, reciting it until you feel as if you might have it memorized. Okay? All right, let's close in prayer. God, thank you for always working things out uh, for your good, for our good, according to your plan. We pray, Lord, that we would bring you praise and glory in our lives. Thank you for loving us. Please help us to love you and others more. In Jesus' name, amen. 
I hope you have a brilliant week and I look forward to seeing you next week for you guys, our last family devotional in the book of Genesis. It has come up so fast. I hope you have a good week. Bye.